and welcome to the Florida Person Podcast. Hi, everybody. Hey. I hope you're, uh, I, hope you're having a good day. Hope you're having a nice week, wherever you are. Yeah, we sure do. Um, I'm Jackie Schwartz. I'm Meg Gallagher. And this is the weirdest news we found on the internet. Yeah. Florida. Florida person. Florida. Florida person. Florida. Florida. Florida person. I found something new and I found something old. Ooh, something new, something old, um, something blue and something borrowed. borrowed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, borrowed. I was working my way there. I was getting there. Because you, you just went to a wedding. Uh, no. No. I, okay. That's wedding no. I went to like was like, uh, was like two years ago. No, you went to a baby shower a that baby was shower. associated with or the people a, who a just... A Halloween-themed baby shower. Well, that's, you know, same, totally same thing. Yeah. So I'm going to get to meet a baby soon, and it's going to be really fun. I get to meet... I've only met, like, a couple of babies. Yeah. In life. I guess I've mostly known the children after they've grown out of babyhood. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually, I don't know. I used to babysit a lot when I was um, in high school, and it would be like oh. little babies. I like preferred oh, wow. little babies because you could, you didn't have to entertain them. <laughs> you know, you could just watch, oh. watch TV and like, you know, give them what they needed, but you didn't have to. You know, little kids are like, I, I want to, I need this thing. I, and blah, blah. <laughs> Gosh, I've never babysat for anybody. I used to, what is it? I did do some dog sitting for, mm. a, cor- for a corgi oh, years ago. That's like a baby. That's like the queen's yes, baby. Was so cute. It was so, he was so cute. His name was Corky and he was so, so sweet. And he was, he looked like one of the queens, like the, I think it's Pembroke style. And he was orange and white. Oh, he was very sweet. Very cute. Very cute. Well, today there's no kids or or dogs <laughs> involved in my stories. My stories do not involve any children. No babies here. No, no. babies of any kind, uh, no. human or canine. Because um, <laughs> last week, last week I had the whole man bites dog thing so you know just oh not yeah this week not this week no nope. <laughs> what do you I have? kind of actually have i guess i'll start with it's kind of like a it's kind of like a story i think i did last week okay but it's a different animal and oh, um this is from uh the dodo oh the dodo the dodo they have the cute little animal stories i mean sometimes they're like what is it like moth trusts woman to raise yeah. its children and you're like what you're like that's a misleading that's <laughs> that that cannot be so and then you get into the article and you're like oh no it's just a moth <laughs> that left some babies here and then a woman was like oh just are these for the me the woman was in the vicinity <laughs> yeah oh my gosh that this has is... nothing to do with that <laughs> <laughs> no this is guy catches random cat in the middle of a hilarious crime spree. Hilarious crime yes. spree. Okay. By Steven Messenger. Ooh, okay. And this was published on October 21st, 2022. Very good. It says recently, while enjoying a pleasant evening out on the town in the island nation of Cyprus, Connor Cutts and his companion happened upon a crime in progress. There, on the sidewalk in front of them, was a random cat, unabashedly flaunting his collection of stolen goods, stuffed monkey toys, dolls, which were strewn about. But as cuts soon discovered the cat's crime spree wasn't over quite yet as the couple looked on the kleptomania cat discarded the monkey doll he'd been playing with and turned around he began to cross the street where was he headed to the the store that sells those monkeys that's where however again he had no intention of paying where well, the- yeah duh i mean duh. <laughs> what did this guy have like a wallet hanging off its neck it's like just uh grab uh whatever you need out of there 
What are you talking about? <laughs> Where the cat had come from, or why exactly he felt the need for so many stolen stuffed monkeys is anyone's guess. But as brazen as those thefts were, they've left no hard feelings in their wake. Ionis Athamau, who owns the store that the cat robbed, says he's well aware of the crime spree, and he has no problem with it, frankly. The cat was very funny, Athamo told the dodo. Okay, we lost some money, but we enjoyed the cat regardless. Who doesn't love a little monkey business after all? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but the best part about this, you have to click on the link and watch the video and the article because it's like some English guy is recording everything. Uh-huh. And so he's like describing everything in his like English accent. Oh, very good. Oh, very oh look good. over there. Oh, look. Oh, look at that cat over there. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, he's going back. Oh, you're going back, are you? It's <laughs> And I think it's a calico cat, so Oh, I love a calico are, cat. It's a she and not a he. That's right, because isn't it it's something that travels, uh it doesn't travel on like the Y chromosome, and so it's more commonly or is it only found in females? Is that oh wait, no, isn't that tor- tortoise shell? Um, I think it's... Or is that the same thing? <laughs> uh, no, tortoise shell is the one that's like brown and light brown and white, like splotchy. Yeah. Um, I know that, well, I, I, I have heard that calicos are mostly female and oh, yeah. that orange cats are mostly, are mostly male. male, predominantly female because their oh. coloring is related to the X chromosome. So it says, so it says our, this is from the sprucepets.com. That's the first thing that came up when I, I just Googled calico, calico only female. Oh, um, I, I, I Googled calico mostly female and says, the ASPA, what is the calico cat facts came up from the ASPCA. <laughs> Yeah, it says it's a fact that almost all calico cats are female because of the unique chromosomal makeup that ma- determines the color variations in their coats. The sex chromosome X and Y determine whether a cat will be male or female. Blah, blah. So yeah, like I said, I guess it's it's just way more common to get that combination if you have two X chromosomes because it doesn't travel on the Y chromosome. Oh, yeah, and and, and you're oh. right about the um, tortoise shell cats as well. They are also mostly female, oh. and with orange cats, only one in five are female. Yeah, it's because I have met an orange cat. I've always heard that, and every orange cat I've ever met for a long, long time, and and since has always been male. But then there's uh, one cat I grew up with next door, and her name was Taxi, and she Taxi. was a, a, a lady. A she was a gal. Cat. Yeah, she was a gal. She was a gal. She was orange. She. She didn't, like, if you'd said her name, she didn't come over and, like, hail your, <laughs> hail to you. And it was, uh, she was, she did her own thing because she was a cat, but her name was Taxi. Very funny. Oh, <laughs> look at that. I do like that whenever you type in something to Google for a question and has anything to do with cats, uh, <laughs> all the pictures of cats it pulls up, I could just. I know, <laughs> it pulls up, it pulls up pictures of cats, little uh, cat charts. Yes, I could just look at pictures of cats on google images all day let's just describe cat pictures for the rest yes and then i reach over and i pet my cat and he goes i was sleeping i was sleeping what you doing does scooter like to drink out of the faucet because theo really likes that theo loves the sink and he will look at people in my house and he will say excuse me eyes (laughs) this way Excuse me, turn this on, please. Excuse me. No, Scooter doesn't like to, well, maybe he would, but he just doesn't get up on counters. So he, I don't think he's aware of the sink being a thing because <laughs> he doesn't get up in like the kitchen and he definitely like the the sink of the bathroom is like a much smaller deal. So I don't think he'd ever think to get up there either. He also, you know, he doesn't get up super high up anyway. Yeah. He's just not a big jumper. He's kind of large in stature and he has short little legs. And I think it's just a, you know, 
when I, even when he jumps on the bed, it's like I can hear his little claws like on on the on the flooring. Like you can hear it kind of like drumming up because he like has to shake his booty a little bit and like drum Aww. up the uh, the like the pose to get into it and like make the distance. It's a whole thing. He doesn't just do it on a willy nilly like whim like a regular cat. Oh, he's got to really think about it. It's a whole process. It's really, really cute. But I'm also like, come on, man, you are your cat. Like, I, I guarantee you're going to make it. I promise you. And if you don't, I will pick you up and put there myself. <laughs> you can do this. And it's funny because I've had so many <laughs> athletic cats growing up that would get up into the craziest areas. And really? Scooter is just not athletic in that way. Yeah. Yeah. He's skilled in other ways. He's skilled in the arts of cuddling and um, <laughs> and things like that. And things like that. So everybody's good at something. Everybody has their talents. Yes. I'm not going to shame have, him. All kitties have talents and some kitties just are talented thieves. Oh, yeah. And stealing little monkeys. I want to know yeah, more about this shop pretty- that just sells little monkey toys. Yeah, and they're right by the door, and the, yeah. it's like almost as big as he, he or she is. <laughs> she yeah. mostly likely she. Yes, most likely is she. These people. Maybe I should write you know? Maybe I should. Is there a place for me to comment on there and be like, "Excuse me." Oh, I wish I love <laughs> comments on news stories because they're so dumb. But sometimes you're like, "Hey, excuse <laughs> me, you don't." Here's a cat. Let me drop a cat <laughs> fact on you right now. <laughs> That's very fun. Oh, I love it. I love a cat story. Anytime a cat story's, you know, in the news, it's going to be on this podcast. I can guarantee it. <laughs> I guarantee it. So this is, um, I'll move on to, <laughs> shut up. Oh, let me move on to my story now that I've gotten all that cat fact out. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, just kidding. I'm kidding. But we are moving on. <laughs> because yeah, we've been riffing on. a little too long. Um, so this is from the AP from October 19th. 2022 at a Boston uh, doesn't have a listed author, but its title is Swift Footed Lizard Named Massachusetts State Dinosaur. Anybody can just say anything they want now, and it's just it's the state. It, it's true. Yeah, there's so many things that are you know state food, official state flower. Now they're state dinosaurs. Mm, no, <sighs> a state dinosaur. I I can accept that. Uh-huh, it it yes. is a. It's been dead for millions of years. Yeah. Oh no, this is a. This is about that. It's swift footed lizard. Is I guess like. What the... Oh, I thought it was like, oh, I thought you were literally talking about a lizard, like a oh, little no. lizard that was vast. And I was like, no, what I... the hell is this? No, 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 no. I can see oh. how you would be confused. Okay. Um, I guess that's what the, the name means, because yeah. the actual cool. name is, um, <laughs> the actual <laughs> name is Podokesaurus holiokensis. Something like that. It's very similar to what I just said. That's the name. I'll never say it again. The article will be linked. The article will be linked, and I'm never going to try and attempt that one again. Uh, what, but I state, mean, what, what state? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Oh. Yeah, so this dinosaur is a mass hole. Oh, <laughs> So a swift-footed lizard that lived millions of years ago in what is now Massachusetts has been named the state's official dinosaur under legislation signed into law Wednesday by Governor Charlie Baker. And then it says the the, the full name, like the actual name, but I already tried it. We're going to call it a a potosaurus from here because that's (laughs) shortening it to that so i don't keep butchering it uh received more than 60 percent of the roughly thirty-five thousand votes cast in a social media campaign initiate initiated early last year by state representative jack lewis beating out other dinosaurs that were also discovered in the state maybe i do need to get back on social media um, so i can (laughs) vote in things like this yeah, I think, <laughs> you know, I left, idea. I left Facebook and Instagram and I never really got on TikTok, although oh, I would like oh, to get on, on TikTok. <laughs> get on, get on Twitter, I guess, while you can. I don't know oh, if it's going to totally, I, don't, like, I it's so was funny. never interested in Twitter. Oh, man, it's like so great because somebody is always going to find something crazy about this dinosaur and be like, oh, it's like little legs. 
Yeah, it's oh, cute, right? Gosh. Yeah. Oh, it looks. <laughs> I like that it has feathers. It's like very true to how dinosaurs really had feathers. Yes. Oh my gosh. There is a great traveling dinosaur exhibit. If anybody ever wants to see a dinosaur exhibit. Um, what is it? Man, these dinosaurs are oh, these. It's like, it's like a dinosaur and like, I don't know, Muppets together. Oh, is it the Jurassic World one? No, it's a traveling museum. What is it called? It's called like Dinosaur, Dinosaur Explorer. Oh, That's okay. That's what you need to see because it's like you go in and you're like, oh my God, this dinosaur has feathers on it. Yes. Uh, the, the... It looks like real quick, like somebody was just like, ah, ah, feathers, add feathers to this dinosaur. And they're the... all different colors, <laughs> all sorts of flares on them. So oh. much flare. Um, okay. my, my sister lives up in Bozeman and there's the museum of the Rockies up there and they have a huge dinosaur collection. And so they have a lot of dinosaur models and some of them are like, this is what we, we have been grown to like learn what it looked like in, in years, but now we think it looks more like this. And so like the first one's like, it looks like the regular dinosaur that you grew up with. And then the next one's just like it's like the dinosaur went to a rave yes. <laughs> you know it's like this huge like tyrannosaurus like it's like you go in you, the way they set it up was just perfect like we go in we see like two like crazy looking dinosaurs and then we look to the right and all the way down is this tyrannosaurus rex looking thing that looks like it's wearing like cruella de Vil's coat it yes. is like so huge yes and it's like yes. what i'm into it i'm into it i love, I love it, it. I love it. It's super Love fun. It. I like that that dinosaur documentary series that um, Sir David Attenborough does on Apple TV, where it's filmed like a actual real nature documentary. And um, oh, it's so great because you get to see all these feathery dinosaurs now. That's really cool. Um, so the rest of the article goes... If I think about my own childhood, the thing that got me interested in science in the first place was dinosaurs. The Republican governor said at the signing ceremony at the Museum of Science in Boston, with some of the state's leading paleontologists standing behind him. And the main reason they got me interested is because of their majesty and their ferocity, ferocity, ferocity. Ferocity. You you nailed it. <laughs> Ferocity. Mm, the words. The words. They won't come. Um, and they're almost alien being status. As a kid, they just created wonder. Lewis came up with the idea of a state dinosaur while trying to find engaging projects for the Cub Scout den he'd led during the height of COVID-19 pandemic. The project did not just get people involved in science, but also taught them about the legislative process, the frame, framing... T- Framingham Democrat said this dinosaur uh, it says its name again it's like Voldemort I'm like I won't I won't say its name <laughs> uh, the photosaurs uh, means swift-footed lizard of a whole yoke was discovered in western Massachusetts in 1910 by Mount Holyoke College professor Mignon Talbot the first woman to find discover name and describe a dinosaur oh so that's cool that's really that's cool, cool. And they're, they're really, they look like they're like the size of like a greyhound. Yeah. They're really, oh, they're very cute. Let's, Let's see bring if Florida back. has a dinosaur. Uh, Florida State have, dinosaur. Florida should have a giant uh, <laughs> it just, sloth. It just, <laughs> just comes up. It just comes up with pictures. Have you ever been to, um, it's, it's like Dinosaur World. It's in Plant City. Oh my gosh. I've driven by that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that's what God. just comes up. That's that's it. I, I guess the dinosaurs, the state dinosaurs, is just <laughs> plastic. But it's the number. It says it's the Florida's the number five state for state for fossils. But it includes, I think, mostly like sharks and things. Like Are that. they making jokes about the okay, okay. citizen population? Because that's yeah. not funny. Not <laughs> funny at all. Okay, I found a Wikipedia has, I guess this is actually, you know, a thing that you have a state dinosaur, but I don't think Florida has one because it just skips no. from District of Columbia to Massachusetts. 
Oh my gosh, all next right. time you come to Florida, we need to go to Dinosaur World and that's all yeah, about. Yeah, we need to go to Dinosaur World. We also, and then we need to start a campaign to get our dinosaur named in the state of Florida. What would be the state dinosaur? Oh my gosh. <sighs> okay, I'm going to know. We'll have to do some research on that. Table that, that lived in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to just come up with old people. I know it. Ah. Uh. Oh, I mean, it's not a dinosaur, but I guess Florida's where the giant sloth was. Yeah, you the giant that? sloth. Yeah. That, yes, the giant sloth. There's that giant um, statue in the Gainesville Museum National of uh, Natural History. History. Yeah. yeah, yes. I know, I know. So there was there was stuff. I think it's really known for the the giant sloth, though. That is what keeps coming up, and that's giant not paleontology. Ooh. There's a ooh. Megdalon. Oh also yes, a thing. the Basilosaurus, which looks like a like a alligator with like an alligator and a shark is what it looks like. Well, I guess the problem is that Florida is less than twenty million years old, and dinosaurs are died out about sixty five and a half million oh, years ago. I guess it's like watery din watery dinosaurs. Yeah, so it's mostly just the sharks, but that's like a sharky dinosaur and I think it counts. Um and I think, you know what, just make it the giant ground sloth. I don't even care. Just make it the giant Do it. ground sloth. Do it. You know, cuz that's the best one anyway. We all know it. It is yeah. known. It is known. It is known. All right. So I so. hate to get off the dinosaur ch- train, but I I think we have to. We got to keep. Moving. I guess we have to keep moving. Let's just yeah. talk about dinosaurs. I could. This could just be the Florida Dinosaur Podcast. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I maybe the spinoff. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. So there's this movie that I have not seen, mm-hmm. but um, I watch a really great uh, YouTube channel where one guy's Nick and he's a professional film critic and his husband is Joseph and they talk about movies and it's like my favorite thing. They have like 800 videos on there and um, they were mentioning this movie that Keanu Reeves was like tricked into doing called The Watcher from 2000 and it's it's got an 11% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, that was during uh, Keanu had like a pretty rough decade in like it was, after yeah, it was you know, the Matrix. Yeah, it was like around two thousand. And mm-hmm. um, Google users though seventy one percent like the movie, so maybe I'll watch it and I want to see what it what it was. He was tricked into making the movie, and he's okay. just uh, there's just story after story about him being like a real nice guy. And he yeah, really don't was, trick Keanu. He was a he's real so nice, nice, but he was a real nice guy about this. Yeah, I bet he was. <laughs> so this is from, I really didn't realize this. This was not like w- why I picked this article, but this article is more than 21 years old. It says, Keanu, I was, tri- <laughs> I was tricked into making film and it came out on September 11th, 2001. Tuesday. Wow. Bad timing, guys. <laughs> That's probably why I don't even remember this movie. because there was No, like... no. I think it got <laughs> oh, pretty overshadowed. <laughs> Whoa. That was crazy. Just looking at that. Okay. Keanu Reeves has claimed that he was press ganged into this is the Guardian. So is press ganged mean like forced in English terms, I guess? I suppose. Um, it was I'm just saying forced. And starring <laughs> in the serial killer thriller The Watcher, after a friend forged his signature on the contract. Unable to conclusively prove the forgery, Reeves said that he finally agreed to take the role rather than face a protracted legal battle. The Watcher was directed by Joe Cherubonic, an erstwhile buddy of Keanu, who has also filmed the actor on tour with his rock band Dogstar. The movie starred the Matrix hero as a menacing killer who taunts James Spader's overrock cop. At the time of filming, there were reports that Reeves was unhappy that what he had envisioned as a minor role had been made the center of the film. <laughs> that's that's when you know it's a bad movie. You're like, oh, I'll just do it like a little part. You're like, oh, no, I'm in the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, also rumored to have been outraged to discover that he was repeating that he was receiving a reported one point five million dollars less than his co-star 
James Spader. What? That's wild to me. Like the Matrix was a huge hit. Like, yeah, come on. Crazy that James Spader was making more money. Anyways, now it transpires that Reeves' annoyance ran deeper still. I never found the script interesting, but a friend of mine forged my signature on the agreement. Not a very good friend. <laughs> Get rid of him. The Calgary Sun newspaper. <laughs> I couldn't prove he did, and I didn't want to get sued, so I had no other choice but to do the film. Reeves said that other legal stipulations meant that he had to wait 12 months after the film's release before finally being able to go public with his anger. If it's September, that means it's been a year, so I can finally talk, he told the newspaper. Wow. At the time of its release, Reeves refused to promote The Watcher. In the event, however, the film spent two weeks at the top of the U.S. box office, but Cherubanek's picture met with largely negative reviews and Reeves' villainous turn was pinpointed by many as a major flaw. Short of getting Angela Lansbury or Rodney Dangerfield or Lassie for the part, the miscasting could not be more complete, wrote The Guardian's Peter Bradshaw. Keanu is profoundly wrong as a serial killer. Now, I'm... Hmm a little older than you and there was this period of time especially before the matrix came out that like film critics were like obsessed with like using keanu reeves as like shorthand for like the worst actor imaginable i do remember i remember some of this or maybe i just remember people talking about it it, but and a lot of that had to do with like uh his you know one of his first big performances being in um bill and ted's excellent adventure Right. And, you know, it's like people will see a character and they'll be like, oh, that's who he is. There were some like strange choices. Like, I mean, Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula. He's got like kind of a bad English accent, but like he's always been good in things. I watched the original Matrix recently, like the first one, and I watched it and I'm like, I can't imagine anybody else doing this. Like. Right? He's it's so like, perfect for it. And everything yeah. else he's been in, like, recently, he's really had, I guess, with all the John Wick movies and stuff. And that's the thing, too. They're like, oh, he's too nice of a guy. Him as a serial killer, unbelievable. And he's just doing all these John Wick movies now. And, uh, yeah. you know, like, killing yeah. a lot of people in those movies. <laughs> and he's like, I also learned that, what like, uh, I saw a video about visual effects, um, special effects, and how very gosh a group of people that really need to be like unionized and stuff that i'm surprised they're not unionized so they get really screwed over by huge studios especially like marvel keanu reeves was one of the uh, he gave um special effects artists like a like a big bonus when he did the matrix like he's just seems like a really like a legitimate nice guy he donates a lot to the to cancer different cancer funds and and like children's hospitals and things like that too yeah, it's like I really it makes me want to watch this movie again because I I don't, I don't remember seeing it. Um, and I guess we came he came out <laughs> with his side of the story on a day that like nobody was. Yeah, it, something happened that. that really. I bet this, I bet this article got released at like you know like the start of the workday, like at eight a.m. or whatever, and then they were like, oh yeah. oh well, no one's gonna see that one. Yeah. yeah. A lot more going on. I do want to watch this movie now because it's like the, yeah, like the the, uh, Rotten Tomatoes score is 11%. And I'm like, well, I've seen some movies, but I don't know about this. It's got to be better than like The Room. It's got to be better than like Birdemic. Yeah. Yeah. Sharknado. There's a lot of, there's some terrible movies. Most of the Fast and Furious movies, (laughs) you know. I mean, look, I, I remember that, because a lot of actors have had that. I mean, recently people are loving Nick Cage again, but I know Matthew oh, yeah. McConaughey used to not get taken seriously. And then he did Dallas Buyers Club and everybody was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This guy is actually <laughs> really legit. You know, it's really, it's also really fun watching. I mean, it's, it's an interesting experience when you're watching a movie where, you know, the actor is like basically forced to play a role so they're like acting under duress like Whoopi Goldberg in the film Theodore Rex 
where she's yeah. like a cop. Yeah, where she's that, stuck. Man, it's she's so mad to be in that movie. Man. And it's like, it's so, oh God, it's so it's interesting so to watch bad. that. Because it's so like, oh man, it's like, I am on your side. Like, 100%. That is like one of the you worst movies good. ever made. You are too good to be in this movie. <laughs> oh yeah. It's just very, that is... I remember watching that as a kid and I was like, oh yeah, it's, you know, cause I knew Whoopi Goldberg cause she'd be on like Disney channel every once in a while. And I knew, <laughs> um, I don't know, and I loved dinosaurs. So I like, that was a home run as far as movies went for like young, young me. But oh yeah. I'm like, holy moly, what a train wreck. How did this get greenlit by anybody? Oh boy. Uh, we'll link Theodore uh, Rex in yes. this, it, what a yes. great, what a crazy thing. Yeah, they- so crazy. <laughs> it's the craziest movie when ever made. Whoopi Goldberg was legally forced to co-star yeah. with a dinosaur. Yep, yep. Just an acting masterpiece. Yes. <laughs> Finishing up with this last story. It's really, really short. But I just found this website. And, you know... <laughs> If they do, they link it back to other websites. So, you know, the stories are true stories, but this is like a website called floridanewsheadlines.com. And really? like the three things they have on there is trending now, top last week, and Florida man. Those are the categories on this website. Oh, gosh. So they got this story from NBC2 and then they have it like linked to, to this site. And the story is firefighters called after a woman's foot gets stuck in massage chair. <gasps> no. Yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, Naples, Florida. Naples Fire Rescue responded to a call regarding a woman who had her foot stuck in a massage chair. When the rescue arrived, power was sec- secured to the chair. The chair was later taken apart to free the foot. Oh my god, that just sounds like that sounds like something that would be on like Rescue Nine One One, right? Uh, <laughs> they would always have us. shows like that with like uh, William Shatner hosting, and it would be like a story about like a child who got like a hanger stuck in their throat, like Ugh. horrible things, like a tooth toothbrush stuck in the throat. Everybody was getting things stuck in their throat. Yeah, yeah. It just says the steel rods that hold the ro- rollers. Uh, cut with a grinder in order to free the woman's leg. She was evaluated for injuries and released from the scene. I love those massage chairs, but like sometimes the leg part is a little like, I don't know. I don't know if I want like to put my legs in this like little vice and then it kind of like, no. you know, I just want, I want the stuff on my back. I don't, don't touch my legs. Yeah. Don't I don't touch my I don't, legs. I don't trust robots that much. I trust them to vacuum my apartment, and you're right. And I guess I, I do guess... trust. I guess I do trust it to like move my body around. Like my yeah, robot. you you are kind of sitting in a robot. <laughs> I guess I am. I kind suppose of. I um, am. Oh, and I also, um, you know, I guess I have an Alexa, and that thing is listening to me so much, and I'm so mean to my Alexa. I'm always like, "Shut up! That's oh, not what no. I said." That's, and so she's gonna kill me as soon as she can. I know. Oh, it. no. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know she's going to do that. I know it. So, you don't, <laughs> you don't hear me on the next podcast. Alexa done got me or I'm stuck in a massage chair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, I think we're going to lead the the bill to get Florida its own, um, you know, lizard, its own, its own dinosaur. Yeah. Because I think it. that's an abomination that it doesn't. Uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, California has one. California's is, well, it's the August Nolophus Morosi. It just kind of looks like, um, okay. it looks very cow-like. It's very cow-like. Oh, cow-like. Well, we need more of those. It's cute. I mean, it's cute. It's not what I think of when I think of California, but it's it's cute. <laughs> Somebody out there is like, it's Nancy Pelosi. Oh, jeez. Jeez. Yeah. And so there you go. And uh, cats who are thieves, but the cutest of thieves. I know. It reminds me of little my little Malcolm Maurice, and he likes to keep all of his toys in his bed. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just very, very cute. Scooter doesn't really play with toys that much. He kind of just, like, he loves pens, and he has a bunch of toys, and sometimes he's just like, oh, I, you know, whatever. <laughs> I had to put the catnip spray on them, and he'll, then he'll pick them up and lick them, and, you know, that, but he doesn't really, you know. He's an adult, you know. He's, he's too mature. <laughs> too mature for these, like, fishies and miceys. Aww. He's trying to grab that pen so he can go to work, you know. Go to work. Get a job, Scooter. Yeah. He's like, my job is professional cuddler. <laughs> Aww. Aww. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, that was uh, the weirdest news we could find on the internet. This is the Florida Person Podcast. You can find us everywhere you get podcasts or on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to go watch a Keanu Reeves video now. Yeah. Yeah, a motion oh, picture starring the Watcher. Oh, the Watcher. Yeah. Go watch or it. Maybe, or maybe one that he enjoyed being. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe Blake that out he had his consent. Like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so there you go. Uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Florida. Florida person. Florida. Florida person. Florida. Florida person. Florida. Florida person. Florida.